probably the central, the most central piece is going to be the experience that the teachers can understand intellectually how the arts can be an engaging thing, but until they actually experience it as their students might, and still, until they feel what it's like to engage through the art with um, it's never really going to land. They're never really going to make use of it. Once they've been in the student's shoes, and that's what experience is all about, once they feel what it's like for the students to learn through the arts, then they're much more convinced. They can, teachers are really good at being able to bifurcate their mind and saying, here's how it feels for me to do this experience, and I can see how specific students in my classroom will benefit from this. And that's what we're hoping for with the experience is they go, wow, this is really a rich feeling. I'm emotionally, intellectually, uh, imaginatively engaged. And I can see this student and that student and this student, how it could really reach them in my classroom. So experience is important for them to really be sold on how, this, how the arts can work within their classroom. And so we start. I'm gonna ask you to come and stand up, find yourself a partner. Just find a little bit of space with you and your partner. Find yourself a partner. Yes? Oh, we're an even number right now, which is nice. It worked out perfectly. Okay? So uh, we're going to do a little, we're going to do a little rotating roles here. So I'm going to use several strategies in a row, purposely, um, but around just vocabulary to step us into the world that we're going to be in. In a workshop okay? setting. So to, like in the first two of them, piece um, for teachers I to need you to count off uh, who's uh, number one and who's number, who's, who's number two. From one and who's number two. Multiple standpoints. Number one, one reflect. Please. What was it like? Thank you, thank you, perfect, lovely. And let's always be stupid, number two. Thank you, I appreciate it, yes. It's just, you know, horrific tales of being in second grade or fourth grade where long battles ensue and tears erupt after that. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start out with sculpted snapshot. So you're going to literally sculpt your partner based on the word, all right? So number one, you're gonna be the first statue. So number one, if you can just feet together, hands at your sides, face towards your partner. Okay, and number two, when I give you the word, you'll have 10 seconds in which to sculpt something that suggests this word. And the first word is massive. How do you sculpt the idea of massive in your partner's body? 10 seconds, look careful at different parts that you're using, how you get their whole body involved in some way to suggest massive. Five more seconds to finish that off. What can you do? What part of the body might have you left out that gets massive? Three and two and one and freeze. Hold on to it. We got hands up in the air. We got some bodies bent over. We got legs spread apart. We got some chins pointed up into the air. We got some knees that are bent and you can unfreeze. Thank you very much. Simple, simple. So let's switch it. Number two, you're going to be our statue this time. Number one, you'll be doing it. So number two, feet together, hands at your sides, face right to your partner. And number one, your word for a statue is havoc. How do you get a sense of havoc into your partner's body? Think about how you're using different parts of their body. Yeah. Just 10 seconds. What, uh, what different parts of the body can you use that you left out? Yeah. Look careful in the last five seconds. What else could you add? What part of their body maybe doesn't have something to get to havoc? Three, two, uh, one, uh, and freeze. Hold on. We got some toes on the ground. We got some fingers almost pinched together. We got some arms rounded. Got some leg and knees up in the air. Got some heads tilted to the side. And you can unfreeze. Thank you very much. All right. I'm going to ask you now just to turn to your partner, say thank you so that you can find a new partner, a new partner, please, to work with. A new partner to work with. All right. Numbers and letters don't matter this time because I'd like you to be a work in a pair snapshot. So the two of you working together toward a single image with both of you as part of it. Um, just for clarity's sake, I'll give you the word and then you have 10 seconds to talk about it. What I'd like you to do is just talk. Don't create anything in the first 10 seconds to share ideas and what you want to uh, work toward. And then um, we'll give you the five seconds to go into the image. So the word is superhuman, superhuman. Talk to your partner. What could you do to suggest superhuman? How might the two of you together get the idea of superhuman? What are you doing to get superhuman? Five more seconds to talk to your partner. Where superhuman is. All right, let's give it a try. Five, 
Put it into your body. Four. Get superhuman. Three. Take it easy. Two. Don't hurt yourself. And hold it. We got fingers in the air. We got legs sticking out. We got arms wrapped around. We got elbows almost together. We got hands up high in the air. We got legs spread apart. And you can unfreeze. There we go. That's the idea. Uh, so, uh, turn to your partner, please, and just say thank you once again, and find a new partner, please. One last new partner that you can work with. Um, thank you very much. Can you please decide who's letter A and who's letter B? Who's letter A and who's letter B? Okay? All right. So, the last one, we'll do an add-on snapshot, right? So, I'll call one of the letters, and you will create an image by yourself. The second letter will just observe what your partner's doing, and then I'll count you to add on to the image. So there's no conversation whatsoever about this particular one, basing it on what it is that you see your partner uh, create. Okay? So um, the word is frantic. Let us start out with letter A. Letter A, three seconds to create an image related to frantic. Letter B, just watch your partner. Letter A, three, two, one. And freeze. Hold on to it. Letter B. Look careful. Look careful. How could you add on to your partner's frantic and complete the picture and add on? Three. Add on to get frantic in there with your partner. Two. One. And freeze. Hold on to it. We got hands up in the air. We got hands on heads. We got bodies bent forward. We got knees on the ground. We got bodies, uh, legs spread apart. And you can unfreeze. Thank you very much. Now you can talk to your partner about what you were trying to get at with frantic. What you're trying to think at. Yeah, what you're trying to get to. <laughs> So, based on what you just talked to your partner about, can you guys uh, revise your picture to try to bring your two pieces more in line with each other? Seven seconds. What can you do to bring it a little more in line with each other for frantic? Six, five, four, uh, frantic, three, uh, two, uh, one, uh, and freeze. Hold on. We got bodies leaned against each other, some close down to the ground. We got legs spread apart. We got bodies bent to the side, hands up in the air, eyes up really wide, and you can unfreeze. There we go. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, go ahead and come and sit down. You, it will be brief that you get a chance to sit down, but uh, I would like you to give you just a moment there because we've uh, done well. Great. So, these four words... Yeah, are going to be a part of the content that we're working here with in a moment. So what uh, might massive havoc, superhuman, and frantic suggest to you is the material that we might be working with or what kind of story is uh, based within that. So just think about that for a moment.